Well, okay, everybody, here we go. And uh, I'm going to put my clinical hat on today, and I'm going to be talking to you. I don't even know when I'm going to title it, but it might be manifesting the love that you deserve and desire, whether you are married, single, or have not been in a relationship for a long time. So, so I'm talking to three different groups, to people who are married, to people who are divorced, widowed, ain't been in a relationship for maybe decades or years, not interested in a relationship and singles who want to attract love. So I'm going to address each group individually, but I just want to give you just some general clinical, the way love happens, uh, family systems kinds of things. Okay, well, first of all, we're wired for love. God is love. We all desire love. Y'all have heard the, 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 the statistics around little children who aren't touched. We are made for love. And love is our divine birthright. So desiring love, you know, even uh, from a little girl, women, we are taught, you got to find your prince charming. You know, you got to find your soulmate. I mean, that is ingrained in us from childhood. And, and men sometimes may not verbalize it, but they desire love just like we do. They're talk, taught, you know, you got to be a man so you can take care of your family. So we're wired for it. It's an it's in our DNA, um, we're one with God and one with all there is. And so God is love, the essence of his being in love is love. But psychologically and clinically, what happens is we're, we're born into dysfunctional family systems. And so when we come together, we both bring our whole family with us, <laughs> their beliefs, their perceptions. We don't know it. Their baggage, their uh, uh, fights, their ways of thinking, etc. And so you don't know that because you're in love at the time. But when you come together, there can be clashes. Do I believe that you can find love and love can just blow your mind? Absolutely. Do I believe that you can find your soulmate? Absolutely. Do I believe that, that you can enrich and uh, revive your marriage again? Absolutely. I was a marriage and family therapist for, for, for decades for one decade at least. <laughs> but, but this is what happens. So the family system is like this. It all depends on what happened to you in your childhood. Maybe in your family, your dad was not there and you grew up in a single home. Maybe some of the uh, beliefs were don't you tell what's going on in this household. And so that means that when you grow up, you don't really know how to share your feelings. Or maybe there were no boundaries growing up. So when you do grow up, you don't know how to say no to people. Uh, or maybe you did not feel loved and nurtured or cared for, or maybe there was no communication. If something came up, you didn't really talk about it. Or maybe you grew up in a family where you guys were, the truth was allowed, or you were allowed to own your feelings. You did have a sense of belonging, or 
you, you knew how to directly communicate what you want. Everybody get the story. So when you come together in a relationship, you're bringing your beliefs, your perceptions, your experiences, etc. And so you might grow up in a family system that says, you know, you can't trust people or you shouldn't be feeling that way or you know, you can't talk about your problems to everybody. So when you come together uh, in love and in marriage, you're bringing all of that with you inwardly. So can you find love? Absolutely. Is love available? For sure. Can you be happy? Absolutely. Let me just make some general statements. And I think that we have put too much pressure on a human being, another person, to make me happy. Only God, only the Spirit can really give you the level of love that, that, that you might possibly need. Otherwise, you might become so dependent on that person to make you happy. I had a client once, and then I'm going to get on with these specific groups. I had a client once. He said, Constant, I mean, he was wealthy. He was rich. He was a good man. I'm not saying he was perfect, but he treated his wife like royalty. And he said, you know, it's nothing that I can do for her. She's never satisfied. So you see, it really had nothing to do with him. It was her own upbringing, her own not feeling worthy, her own, you can't really trust a man. So you bring all of that with you. And that's why it is so important, everybody, that you really, as much as possible, deal with all of that stuff. And, and my stuff was... I needed a man to rescue me and take care of me. Now, you've heard me say that if you don't get the inner or soulish healing that you need, you become like one parent and you marry or connect with the other. So I became like my mama, sweet Pauline Lane. She was sweet docile, beautiful, uh, but depended on my dad. So my mom grew up cleaning other people's homes. And if she got mad or upset, my daddy would say, Polly, you don't have to go to work. Come on home. And mom would come home and just take care of the house and look pretty for my dad. My dad was 20 years older than my mom. What did I do? I grew up subconsciously, consciously, completely oblivious to my choices. I'm highly educated. I marry a man 20 years older than me. Why? Because on the inside of me, I really felt powerless. I didn't know I did. I thought I was independent because I'm degreed and I'm a therapist and all of that. But I was really looking for someone to rescue me. Someone who could financially take care of me. There's nothing wrong with that, etc. I'm just showing you the common threads that are tattooed on the inside of us that we are oblivious to when we get in relationships. That's why it is so important that you take your best self to a relationship. And even when you do, you have to work through some things. I don't care how fine she is, guys. 
I don't care how foxy she is, how hot she is. She's still going to have to work through some stuff with you. Ladies, I don't care how handsome, how good looking, how, oh my God, he is so fine. Look at those muscles. He is, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's a mover and a shaker, he's a baller. Guess what? He still got to work through some things with you. But the good news is it can happen. So let me talk to these three groups about love. I'm going to start with the people who are divorced, haven't been in a relationship. You might be thinking I'm too old to be in a relationship. Maybe it's been a long time. Maybe you were wounded. Maybe you've been so hurt that you closed your heart. Or maybe you think that it's just impossible or Constance, I don't even know the dating game. I'm talking to that group right now. So the first thing I'm going to say to that group is that at this very moment, all possibilities exist. The Bible says all things are possible, but you're going to have to choose whether you desire to have love or not. I'm going to say that you need to really take a look at and deal with any wounded places that have happened to you. Maybe divorce. Y'all, divorce it can be traumatic. Maybe divorce. Maybe the person died. Maybe uh, they cheated on you. Uh, maybe it's not what you thought it would be. Maybe he or she got on drugs. You need to deal with that. Because if you don't, you know, it could be decades and you just stay single and you don't really believe that love is available to you, but it is. And you've heard me say, you never allow a relationship defined for you. Oh, I'm not going to ever open up my heart again. I'm not going to ever love again. You can't trust women. You can't trust men. You never let life define that to you. You define your own life by making a decision. Hey, this was difficult. I am mad as you know what, I am hurting, but I'm going to work through this because this is not my best life. Some of you are lonely, you are bored, uh, you have lost faith in love. I understand I'm not living in a fantasy world or a fairy tale world. I'm just telling you the truth. I believe that we were created for love. And so these are some things that you can begin to do. Now, if you want to stay where you are, that is your decision. I, I think you need to be, begin to, number one, after you decide, well, you know, I am going to deal with my stuff. And, you know, the interesting thing is, once you deal with your stuff, because, uh, uh, you know, I work with a lot of women, they are ballers, they making six figures, seven figures, but they're, they're lonely. They're alone. Don't you want to have somebody to share your life with? And do you want to go through your life not trusting people and on the defensive that, oh my God, you know, you can't really trust men or women, et cetera. So that's going to have to be a choice for you to open to number one, heal your soul, get the help you need. Y'all know I'm a coach. If you're interested in me or somebody else, get the help that you need. You, you, you owe it to yourself to get the help. Secondly, uh, 
understand that it's other folks. You're not the only person that's broken and you're not alone. And you know, when you carry that stuff for years, it turns into depression and sadness. I think that you need to begin telling yourself a different story. What kind of story? That I'm open to love. There are men and women out there that are trustworthy. Uh, there are good relationships. One, one of my uh, clients said, well, you know, everybody I know, they don't have a good relationship. And I said to her, so what does that have to do with you? You don't have to have their experience. You can create your own. So begin telling a different story. Uh, I had another client and she was saying, well, you know, these, these dating websites are crazy. Well, has that been your experience or can you begin to change paradigms and create your own? Okay, drum roll, please. I think you, I don't think you got to forgive those folk that hurt you. Because when you don't, as long as you don't forgive, guess what? They have, they have control over your mind. You, you have given your power away as long as it's been two years, five years, and you are still walking in unforgiveness. And lots of times when you're walking in there, there is no room to create love. I think you got to choose to see the positive side of people. You know, looking back on some of my relationships, what I realized is that that person did the best that they could back in the day. I did the best that I could with the knowledge that I had back then. But am I going to let a previous relationship define me? Absolutely not. I am going to decide what I want. And you've got to let go of, of rehearsing the past pain, uh, telling your story over and over again, resentment, lack of trust. Uh, I was uh, in a meeting a couple of months ago. And it was a group of us. And this one person was just talking about, well, yeah, you know, my ex-husband did so and so. And she was talking about it like it, it had just happened six months ago and it had been six years. So we know with the law of attraction, whatever you think about, whatever you rehearse, whatever you say over and over and over and over again, you're going to get more of that. And so for all of that group, you decide what you want. If you make a decision to heal, sit down, write down, what would you want in a relationship? Be clear about that. Nobody is perfect spirituality, someone who likes to have fun. Uh, one important thing for me was a global thinker, someone who's inclusive of all races and cultures. Write down what you want. What, what, what would bring you joy? Uh, do you want to start with just a friendship, companionship? You decide. Begin to think about it, imagine it in your heart, and then begin to take inspired action. Make a decision, or you can decide to say where you are. You decide at this very moment, there are unlimited possibilities. So, so that's my group of folk who, who have closed up their heart or they've given up on love. Okay, married people. I'm looking at my time, everybody. I've forgotten what percentage of people get divorced. But, but, but marriage is, I believe it's the will of God to come together. Y'all know I was a marriage and family therapist. 
uh, I've, I've worked through divorce myself. You know, marriage is a choice every single day. And so I know so many people that who are in loveless marriages. And so I'm just talking to you. First thing, you cannot change your partner. You cannot control your partner. You cannot, if you change, you're changing for yourself. I have a mantra that says when you change, your entire relationship will change. And so for all of my married people, somebody said the 80-20 rule. I don't know how much I believe in that, but I do. The principle is you may be getting 80% of what you want in a relationship, but maybe that other 20% is getting on your last nerve. And if your focus is on that 20% of what, what you're not getting from your partner, he snores or he, he leaves his socks in the floor or she, she um, the top is off of the toothpaste or she doesn't clean the kitchen or she's always on the phone because whatever you focus on gets bigger. What was it about him or her that attracted you together? You know, you, you got to think about that. And, and so whatever you focus on gets bigger. Why did you marry this person? What was attractive to you then? We know that that marriages go in different phases when you're young is one thing, but the older you get, you know, it may shift and change. And, and so when you change your, your, your uh, partner might change. I think you have to find a communication style that works for your relationships. Uh, statistics show that if you can learn how to work through conflict, then your marriage can uh, survive. I, I got that out. I think you need to understand the love languages. You know, you, you guys have heard about that where um, one person may respond to service provided. Another person may respond to gifts. So service provided, a love language might be Every Saturday, your husband takes your car and he washes it and he fills it up. He makes sure that your car is clean, uh, et cetera. Or maybe if your love, love language is um, possibly gifts, you know, that that person gives you gifts. There was a study done, and um, this see if you can relate to this, that in marriage, Number one need of a man is sex. Second need is purpose, career, uh, um, some sense of, of being admired and looked up to. And the third one's recreational that men really like for us in marriage to have recreational time with them. Go, go drive the golf cart or or, you know, some of the stuff they love doing. So ladies, y'all heard me, right? Sex, number one. Number two is a man likes to be admired, looked up to, uh, feel purposeful, uh, have a career, et cetera. And so if a man doesn't have that, many times a woman may feel like, I, I don't really respect my husband right now because he's not working. Y'all know the deal. So conversely, with the woman, the number one need is not sex, it's love uh, and affection. So guys, y'all know that's a big difference, right? She needs to feel loved, affection, attention. That may not include sex. Second need is stability. You know, there needs to be uh, some form of stability there. And the third need is communication. You know, we speak, we talk more than y'all do, guys. I think uh, it's so many thousand words per day that we speak more than men do. 
somebody said men are general. If you're looking at a newspaper, uh, they, they are the headlines and we are the details. So just even understanding the communication styles and, and the love languages. And, and, and so I'm going to say these are some ways that you can really enrich your marriage, you know, focus in on the positive, uh, never criticize your partner in front of others. Make your marriage a priority. That means, you know, have a date night, plan to spend time together, uh, do some exciting and new things together that, that, that don't cost any money. Uh, pray together, exercise together. I think going to bed together as much as you can is really powerful because you, if you got one person in one part of the house, and then the other person in the bed, you know, when you were dating, that would never have happened. You know, maybe go on a retreat together, have a marriage plan. Well, baby, how can we, what can we do differently to bring the romance back or, 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 or something like that? But I think focusing in on the positives it is, is really, really powerful. I think you, you need to be grateful for your partner and let them know, baby, I really appreciate that you cook every day. I'm so appreciative. Um, you need to identify and ask for what you need. I need for you to put your phone down when we're at dinner, <laughs> you know, so that we can you know, really be connected instead of you being on your phone. Uh, I, I think that at least once a month, you need to get together and talk about, you know, their stuff. Maybe, uh, well, baby, every time you do uh, this, interrupt me while I'm talking, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm not heard. So, so once a month, have a monthly marriage meeting because it's almost like a flower. You have to water it. You have to give it time and attention. You know, you, you have to really look after your marriage. Look for the good. I was out the other night at a birthday party and one of the couples there They've been married for 40 years. And he said, every morning I fix my wife coffee and she just takes two sips and she finished. And so we were all like, do you give her a whole cup of coffee? He said, yeah, just like she likes it. And she takes two sips. And we were all like, how sweet is that? And sometimes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is the small things in life. What can you focus on? Gratitude is so important. Appreciation, ladies. Men love to be praised. Oh, baby, I just thank you how you're taking care of this family. I thank you. You're such a good dad. Uh, you know, whatever you focus on gets bigger. I think you guys need to pray together, meditate together, because when you come together spiritually, I mean, just some awesome things can happen. Uh, when I was married, I will say that when we prayed together, that that really created something very powerful for us, for us intimately. I can't explain it. A lot of couples, I recommend to them, pray together and then sit down and write out what your goals are. And every week when you're praying together, you may just want to hold them up and say, God, here, here are our financial goals. Here, here's our vision for 2022. And there's something about connecting and coming together. Come off of your devices. Guys, we know you love ESPN. We know you love sports. You know, we're not coming against that, but 
women, you know, we need attention. That's why the number one need for a woman is love, affection, and attention. And so there are so many ways that you can enrich your marriage. If there has been infidelity, of course, that is something that definitely needs to be worked through. Uh, but it has to be both parties working together. Because number one, whose idea was it that marriage was a good thing? It was God. And so that's what I'm going to say to married people. Look for, look for the good. Uh, be grateful. Focus in on what your partner is doing. Once again, uh, learn the different love language, communication styles. Don't be mad and angry and, and going into the silence treatment. Um, encourage each other every day. Pray together, read together. You know, identify and ask for what do you need. And I believe that those are some tips that will really help you to, to get the love. That, that you desire and that you deserve. So let's take a deep breath, everybody. And now I'm getting ready to talk to all my single people. Let's take another deep breath in, let it out. Wow, okay. So now I am ready to talk to folk who are ready to manifest love. And, and I've done this before, so I'm just going to cover some things. I'm going to suggest you get my book, uh, Attracting Genuine Love. It's a work, but it would really help you to take a look at your patterns. Um, how did your last relationships end? What do you need to change uh, about yourself, et cetera? I'm going to say one of the first things, if you're ready to manifest love, is you need to know that it's going to be done from the inside out first. So take a look at your paradigm. What do you believe about love? Do you believe that there is a soulmate for you? What are your beliefs around uh, that you are worthy, that you are deserving, that you know, that there are a lot of good men and women out there, that there are relationships uh, that, uh, that you can trust. Uh, if you're going to get on a dating website, your mindset and your consciousness needs to be, uh, I don't care what anybody else's experience might be. I'm going to have a great experience. I think that if you go on a website, are you going on for friendship? Are you going on just to have someone to date and have fun with? Or are you looking for a committed relationship that leads to marriage? I think that needs to be defined. So, so, so on the inside, you, you need to really... Uh, check out your paradigm or your minds uh your mindset i think that going on a dating website that is optional if you believe that i'm just going to start living life and in my living life i will meet someone you know you know that can work too dr joe dispenser said you don't really have to go anywhere you can just get yourself in the vibration uh, in your thinking and in your imagination, I have it now, and that you will attract it to you. Now, that, that doesn't mean that you can sit in your house, but if you're in the vibration of I'm loving, I'm lovable, I'm deserving of love, when you go to the grocery store, that vibrates. So we know that all manifestation is on the inside. It begins with your thinking. Uh, it begins with uh, your imagination and it begins with your words. So 
after you get clear about what you want, let me say this, you attract who you are, not what you want. So if you are not trusting, you're going to attract somebody like that. So you need to become the thing, whatever you desire, you become the thing, you become and see yourself I'm in a committed, loving relationship. You're not saying stuff like, oh, my God, I've been on this dating website for three weeks. These people are crazy. There aren't any good people available. So, so if, if you're saying that, you're not in the paradigm of attracting love. I personally believe, like I have said in my book, uh, you guys can get my book at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. You also can go on Amazon and get it. It's 30 years of my experience uh, in, in that area of working with couples and people. Uh, I think it's okay for you to get clear about what you want. What kind of characteristics do you desire uh, in a relationship? Write that down. You know, just get clear about it. Uh, I think that your thoughts attract. I don't think I know. And that your thinking and your talking, I'm going to talk about talking. Your thinking needs to be, I'm excited about the love. Uh, uh, God is the great matchmaker. Uh, you know, God can direct you. You could get a, 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 a just a hunch. I think I'm going to go to dealer's department store and, and go shopping or, or I'm going to go to Applebee's and have dinner. So, you know, all of those inspired ideas that may come to you. I say you're positioning yourself for love, but you're beginning to think about love. What would your life look and feel like once you had love in your in your life? Would you guys be going out to dinner? Where where would you be going? I, I feel that scripting or writing an ideal scene of possibly walking on the beach together, holding hands. And what that does is it puts you in the vibration of, I have it now, or you could begin to research some of the uh, restaurants that maybe you have not been to, that you would like to go to for dinner, uh, you know, and script about what that was like for you. It was so beautiful and romantic. They had uh, beautiful candles on the table. The the restaurant had live music playing, you know, yada, yada, yada. But you're scripting to keep you and get you in the vibration of I have love now. <clears throat> Let me give me some water. Everybody see that? So you're thinking about it. You, you know, while you're online, you're being led. If you're, if you're online on a dating app and someone doesn't work out, uh, uh, you know, just see it as that wasn't the person for me. That was a good person, but that wasn't the person for me. And kind of like Kathleen said last week, who manifested her job, she said, rejection is God's protection. And so if it doesn't work out, you say, well, it was great talking to you, uh, you know, but obviously we're not a match and, you know, enjoy your life or whatever. So you're scripting, you know, your thinking is, is on, uh, you know, love is coming into my life. Of course, you know, you could call it in with your words. I have tons of uh, love affirmations in my book. Uh, you know, I'm open to receive love now. Thank you, God. <laughs> You're the great matchmaker. And uh, I I'm thankful for love in my life. You know, whatever your affirmations are. But, but if you're single, those are things that you need to be doing every single day. Why it puts you in the vibration of what I have it now. I think you need to practice just loving yourself and loving life. 
not waiting for love to come before you love. A lot of people say, well, when I, when I find that my soulmate, then no, live life out loud right now. And so you're really attractive when you're living life, when you're having fun, when you are adventurous, when you are, are, are just expectant. And I was reading something today that said, uh, don't explore the problem, explore the unlimited possibilities. What are some things that will be possible in your life uh, uh, if you love again? I remember uh, I heard an interview with Beyonce's mom, Miss Tina Knows. Uh, I don't know what her new last name is, but she said after she went through her divorce, how difficult it was. And her friends were like, we got to get you married because her ex-husband had gone on and was getting married. And she said that she had to change her thinking around. I can attract somebody at my age. Because age don't have nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> you know, it's what you believe on the inside. And she began to just see herself and feel herself. What was she doing? She was getting in the vibration that even though I'm 60 something, love can still come to me. So somebody asked me, can I still attract love at 60 something? I said, can you attract money? They say, yes. I said, can you attract abundance? They said, yes. I said, so what, what makes love different? It's a mindset, y'all. It's a belief system. Uh, and I, I talked about the love affirmations and your imagination is so big. I'm not going into a lot of details, single people, but how would you feel? What would your friends be saying to you? Oh my God, we're so excited for you. You know, what would some conversations be about the new love in your life? What would your what would your family members say? You know, how would you feel riding in the car with him or her? How would you feel introducing them maybe to your co-workers at, at a at a company party? So you begin to visualize, go back and listen to my teaching on visualization and how when you visualize, you're actually one with God. And, and, and just see it, uh, see your, you two in the kitchen uh, uh, cooking together, chopping up vegetables or, or walking the dog or on a plane trip together, get it in your mind that love is mine now. I had one client, she said, I just started playing love music. You know, just love ballads that she really liked. And what else do I want to say to my singer for? I'm going to say, be happy now. And then you got to make room in your life for a soulmate. All of these are chapters in, in my book, Attracting Genuine Love. You got to make room. If you're real busy and you on 10 committees and then you hang out with your girlfriends on Saturday and guys, you hang out, you know, you're busy and you play golf three times a week. Do you have room for a relationship? So you have to make room physically, but you also have to make room I think mentally in your mind, because when when somebody comes into your life, things are going to change. <clears throat> you when you go to the store, you're not buying for yourself. You're buying for two people now. Uh, you know, when you choose a movie, you have to consider someone else. So so I'm going to say make room for love in your life. And then lastly, take inspired action. I had a client, she said, it's hard to meet men. I said, well, first of all, if you keep saying that, and if that is your paradigm, it is going to be hard for you to meet men. 
And so it was during pandemic. And uh, I said, why don't you go to some meetup groups online? You know, she likes hiking and, you know, she likes a lot of different things. And join a meetup group, you know, that's doing the things that you like to do and become engaged in it. So she joined four or five. And then after the pandemic ended, they start meeting in person. And she met this one guy. And the rest is history. So take inspired action. Be friendly. When you go to the gym, be friendly. When you're at the store, be friendly. And then just allow the the universe, allow God to really uh, open doors for you. So that's what I'm going to say to the single people. You guys really need to get my book. It's it's really awesome. Attracting and Manifesting Genuine Love, Releasing the Old, Changing the New, and Creating the Future. So to everybody, generally speaking, it is the will of God for you to live life and live it more abundantly. Is having love in your life, abundant living? Yes, it is. Um, I would also begin to find uh, find mantras and, and truths around love. You know, the Bible says two are better than one. But you decide it's not God holding back from you. If you marry, you're going to decide, I want to enrich this marriage. I want to bring the fire and the passion back. You decide, that's what I'm going to do. If you are had been in the relationship, divorced, widowed, had been in the relationship, not open to a relationship, You decide, not God, you decide, you choose. I am going to choose to heal my soul, do the inner work, and open myself up to receive just the the life of my dreams. You you know, uh, somebody said the second time around, Whatever you believe about what you can have, be and do, you're going to have it. And lastly, my single people, you decide, do I want to casually date? Do I want companionship? Do I just want a friend or do I want a committed relationship? And for everybody, whatever you choose, We know that all manifestation begins where? On the inside first. So you go inside and begin to see yourself already having, being, doing, and experiencing love. Well, that was so good. I would love to work with if you're in a marriage, would love to help you do that. I, you guys know I was a marriage therapist, I think, for a decade. Uh, if you're in that second group, you know, just not open to love, I would love to. I would love slow down, Constance. I would love to help walk you through your healing so that you could open up to receive. I mean, so many juicy. Uh, goodies that the universe has for you. Or lastly, if you are are single and you're ready to align with and allow uh, and receive love in your life, I would love to work with you, all three groups. So you can email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. This has been so great. If you know of anyone who needs this, and almost everybody does, Uh, share this on your timeline, share this 
podcast with your coworkers, your friends, um, you know, somebody who might be struggling and uh, bring hope to them. Well, this has been good, everybody. I want you to make a decision to have a great week and uh, let's just open ourselves up to receive the unlimited love that's available in the universe. Have a great week.